Experimental filmmaker Kenneth Anger has been making unique avant-garde work since the 1940s and has had a fascinating career. His portrayal of homosexuality and interest in the occult have also made him a highly controversial figure. Anger made several films in the early 1940s, but his earliest surviving one was the transgressive Fireworks in 1947, made while he was still in high school. Anger was one of the earliest openly homosexual directors, and Fireworks was among the first examples of a film with gay themes. This led to Anger getting arrested on obscenity charges, and the case eventually ended up in the California Supreme Court. This isn't surprising given the social climate of the time, and the fact that the movie isn't subtle or coded in its depiction of homosexuality. Unlike in a lot of its experimental contemporaries, Fireworks does have overt moments of humor, and they're unsurprisingly sexual in nature. Anger himself described Fireworks as a, quote, dream of a dream, and it shows a clear influence from French surrealist director Jean Cocteau. Two years later, in 1949, Anger made Puce Moment, a six-minute dialogue-free color short that is a fragment of what was intended to be a longer work called Puce Women. It consists of a somewhat deranged-looking woman getting ready to go out, choosing between dresses, putting on shoes, and then laying back in a chair and staring off into space. Eventually, she holds her dogs on a leash and goes for a walk. In 1966, Anger added a noisy, folksy soundtrack that's pretty bizarre and experimental and does feel a bit out of place for something filmed in the 1940s. Puce Moment was originally set to opera music from Verdi, but as far as I know, it's not available to watch with this soundtrack. The short has a 1920s feel, as the dresses and main character's hairstyle harken back to this time period. Also, Anger used alternating camera speeds to give the feel of a silent movie. His style became fully formed in the 1950s. He made a short in 1953 called Ode Artifice, but directed his most important work of the decade the year after that with inauguration of the Pleasure Dome. Anger was a follower of the famous occultist Aleister Crowley, and this 38-minute film is filled with occult symbols and imagery. It too has no dialogue and emphasizes mood over narrative while featuring biblical characters and pagan gods. Pleasure Dome contains a few visual tricks and lots of superimposition, along with vivid colors and striking visuals. The 1960s saw a revolution in experimental film with the static works of Andy Warhol and the formalism of the structural film movement. However, Anger was sort of doing his own thing and his films don't feel influenced by the major movements of the era. His main work of the 60s was Scorpio Rising from 1963. Like his earlier works, it covers many topics that were especially controversial in this era, like the occult and homosexuality, and even has Nazi imagery. It also doesn't fit into a clear category when it comes to documentary or fiction, as Anger said that he was just filming what was happening. Scorpio Rising stars lots of leather-clad motorcycle enthusiasts, and is set to pop music like Elvis and Ray Charles. 1965 saw the publication of Anger's first book, Hollywood Babylon. The book describes Hollywood scandals of the first half of the 20th century and was banned upon release. The same year, Anger also made a three-minute short called Custom Car Commandos, which portrayed an automobile in an erotic way. His 1969 film Invocation of My Demon Brother was much more focused on the occult themes, and it features the famous Satanist Anton LaVey. Mick Jagger also appeared and created the abrasive soundtrack. In addition, the cast includes the infamous actor and musician Bobby Beausoleil, who is currently serving out a life sentence in prison for his involvement in the Manson family killings. Like Pleasure Dome, Demon Brother uses multiple exposures to emphasize the otherworldly feel. 1971 finally saw the release of Rabbit's Moon, a short film about a clown that Anger made all the way back in 1950. Anger's final major work before temporarily retiring was Lucifer Rising, a 28-minute long film. It was his most ambitious film yet, as it includes locales across the world that have occult significance, like the Sphinx and the Great Pyramids of Giza. The style is different from his earlier films in that the editing is more traditional and less chaotic, and we don't get the trippy superimpositions he often used. Like Demon Brother, some notable names appear as actors, like Jimmy Page, the guitarist from Led Zeppelin, and Chris Jagger, brother of the Rolling Stone member Mick. Page was originally going to create the soundtrack, but the job eventually went to Beau Soleil, who recorded the music while in prison. After Lucifer Rising, he went into retirement for decades, but started making films again around the turn of the millennium. His most recent work is a short called Airships from 2013. 
His significance is undeniable, especially in avant-garde filmmaking, but also with more mainstream directors like David Lynch and Martin Scorsese, who called Anger one of our greatest artists. His use of pop and rock music have also been cited as an influence on the development of music videos. That'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe.